Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Senior. Interact and hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. I love talking ball with all of our Chat Sports homies. We have a trade to get to as we start this segment, getting into the latest NBA news and rumors. This news coming out from Adrian Wojnarowski on Sunday. The Grizzlies and Clippers have made a deal where Memphis receives Patrick Beverly, Rajon Rondo, as well as Daniel Oturo, and the Clippers get back Eric Bledsoe. Now, reports have come out since this trade was made official that the Grizzlies are open and willing to listen to offers on both Beverly as well as Rondo. And a lot of this has to come down to financial implications, especially for the Los Angeles Clippers, who signed Kawhi Leonard to that long-term max contract extension and need some financial flexibility, and Beverly and Rondo were both making pretty large amounts of money going into next season. No better person to break down the NBA salary cap than Bobby Marks of ESPN, and here was his salary cap breakdown on Twitter. Cap ramifications for this Clippers-Grizzlies trade. Eric Bledsoe over the next two years set to make a base salary of $18.1 and $19.4 million with $3.9 guaranteed. The Clippers will see their tax bill drop from $125 million to $95 million. So that's a savings of $30 million. Tax exemption for the Clippers around $8.3 million. And then for Memphis, Beverly on the books for $14.3, Rondo on $7.5 million. $750,000 likely to be a bonus and a Turo only at $1.5 million. The most notable player in this deal, especially considering where he's going to the Clippers, who are expected to be title contenders, is Eric Bledsoe. And I've always said this about Eric Bledsoe. I think he's overpaid. I think he's overrated. And I'm not sure he's worth that monster salary that he's getting paid. And he hasn't really lived up to the expectations that were kind of put on him early in his NBA career when he looked to be turning into a pretty dynamic one or two guard. This past year with the New Orleans Pelicans, Pelicans wanted more from him. 12.2 points per game, little less than four assists, only shot 34% from distance and 42% from the field. So the numbers from an efficiency standpoint last year and over the last few years, not good enough for a guy who shoots the basketball a lot. The hope for the Clippers is that when you put him alongside Paul George and Kawhi Leonard once he comes back, maybe Bledsoe is going to be able to get some more open looks. So I want to ask you this. Who won this trade between the Grizzlies and the Clippers? Three players to give up for an average player in Eric Bledsoe? I'm not sure. I understand you shed some salary, which is what Los Angeles needed to do. But get your votes in and let me know who won this trade Type LAC for the Clippers, type MEM for the Memphis Grizzlies. Get your votes in down below in the comment section. NBA Now is made possible thanks to our sportsbook partner, BetUS. This deal sounds fake, but I promise you, it's the real thing. If you go to chatsports.com slash bet and enter the promo code chat125, you get a 125% deposit bonus, meaning when you put $100 in your account, you'll automatically have $225 to wager on maybe NBA Summer League if you're a degenerate like myself and producer Marshall Green. Knicks Hawks tonight in Las Vegas on Monday. Knicks four-point favorites over under set at 174 and a half. You can use that link as well as that promo code to bet on this game, maybe some NBA futures team that's going to win the 2022 NBA title. But here's the deal. You have to use that link at the bottom of your screen as well as that promo code to get that 125% deposit bonus. If you don't use that link and you don't use that promo code and you try to put it in on Google, it's not going to work. Let's take a look at the 2022 NBA champion odds where maybe you can use all $225 to put your lettuce down. Nets, Favorites at five to two odds. Lakers three to one odds. Bucks nine to one. Warriors eleven to one. If you're looking at really good value there, I'm intrigued and excited about Golden State. You get some good bang for your buck. Eleven to one odds. Once again, chatsports.com/bet. Enter the promo code chat one two five. Let's get to the latest on Pascal Siakam. According to Sam Amick of the Athletic, these. Pascal Siakam, Toronto Raptors trade discussions and rumors have been simmering for quite some time now. But Amick said that it's not likely that Siakam is going to get dealt for a couple of reasons. Siakam doesn't want to go anywhere, even though he had a blow up last year with coach Nick Nurse. And the Raptors 
don't really want to look to move him this offseason. And these trade rumors have been going on for a little while, especially after the Raptors went with Scotty Barnes with pick number four in the 2021 NBA draft, leading to a lot of NBA executives to think, okay, Barnes, Siakam, similar developmental players. Obviously, Siakam more ahead of the curb with his de development right now than a guy like Barnes, but Barnes projecting forward could end up being a player like Siakam. But I think it's smart for the Raptors to hang on to Siakam because he's really developed into a very good two-way player. One of the reasons why he's on the trade block is because after getting a max contract from Toronto, two off seasons ago, his numbers this past year went down kind of across the board. Points per game from 22.9 to 21.4. Field goal percentage from three went down from 35.9 to 29.7. But I think Siakam is somewhere around the player that he was in 2019-20. And I think he's a very good defensive player who is still getting acclimated with the NBA game offensively and continuing to grow there. Here's what Amick had to say on The Athletic in that most recent report. Based on conversations with several people close to the situation in Vegas, I'd venture to say no, that the Raptors aren't looking to trade Siakam, at least for now. They will continue to listen to the calls that come their way, which is no different from what the recently re-signed Masai Ujiri, now president and vice chairman, and general manager Bobby Webster have always done with that organization. But in stark contrast to the Ben Simmons situation in Philly or the Damian Lillard saga in Portland, it appears there is no uncomfortableness or pressure on the Siakam front, in large part because sources say he still wants to be in Toronto, especially after being away for a season while playing in Tampa. The Raptors' rebuild is on. They let go of Kyle Lowry in that sign and trade to the Miami Heat, which signaled to me that they're resetting just a bit after winning the NBA title back in 2019. But because you have Masai Ujiri, who I think is the best front office executive in the league, and Nick Nurse, who's one of the best X's and O's coaches in the game, as well as an organization that has done an absolutely tremendous job of developing talent, I don't think this rebuild in Toronto is going to last all that long because there's so much organizational structure from ownership to management down to the roster as well as the coaching staff. And I think Siakam will be a good component to that rebuild. Do you think Siakam is going to be on the Raptors next year? That's the question that I have for you right now. And what I want you to do is get those votes in in the comment section. Type Y for yes, he'll be in Toronto. Type N for probably not, he'll get traded. Be sure to get those votes in in the comment section. As for Laurie Markkinen, this has been a name that we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks because he's a restricted free agent, still on the market, but because he's a restricted free agent, he has requested a trade out of Chicago. There have been numerous reports linking Markkinen to the interest from the Dallas Mavericks. Markkinen, a restricted free agent. So basically what that means is another team across the NBA can offer Markkinen a contract, but it's up to the Bulls to match that. And if they don't match that deal, Markkanen is free to go elsewhere. I think a realistic scenario that we're looking at here, a sign and trade so that the Bulls can get some type of value back for Markkanen, a guy who is still in his early to mid-20s and brings you modern day value because he's a big who can stretch the floor and knock down three-pointers from an efficiency standpoint. This past year in only 26 games, which has continued to be a concern for Markkanen because over the last three years, he's missed at least 20 games in each of those seasons. He played well in 26 games, 13 and a half points per game, 5.3 rebounds. He shot 48% from the floor and 40% from distance. If Markin is, is able to stay healthy for a big man who really stretches the floor and gives you that type of value, if he's able to knock down threes around a 40% clip, he will be a viable piece to a playoff team this upcoming season. I like the player. I'm a little bit concerned about the durability as well as some of the injury issues, but Markkanen can still play, and here's the deal. Not only is he young, but because of some of the injury issues that he has had, I think you'll be able to sign him to a contract worth, let's say, three years worth a very affordable price because his value isn't maxed out right now because of the production as well as some of those injuries. So we'll see what happens on the market in front. Uh, this past year with Chicago, I would have liked to have seen how he played more 
uh, if he was able to play more alongside Nikola Vucevic and some of the other pieces on that roster. I think the Bulls are fine with moving on from him because he doesn't fit on a roster that now features Lonzo Ball at the one, DeMar DeRozan at the two, Zach Levine at the three, Patrick Williams at the four, and Vucevic at the five. Here's what Amick had to say about Markinen. Dallas would love to convince Markinen to sign under his value. What, and what is market value? If the market hasn't improved him, uh, the $15 million annually they, that he hoped for and fit him into the team's $11 million traded player exception, which is abbreviated at TPE. I've heard Chicago has interest in Maxi Kleber. It's a riskier deal for Dallas giving up both a rotational player and signing Markin into a high, higher salary point, excuse me. It might be a worthwhile gamble, although you would have to really talk me into it. Maxi Kleber has been the better player in past seasons, or at least the more useful one for a team with postseason aspirations. So Mavericks in on Markinen, and if a sign-in trade deal happened, maybe Maxi Kleber would be the player sent to Chicago in exchange for Laurie Markinen. I think Markinen is like a B minus, maybe even a C plus as a player right now as we sit here in August. Grade Markinen as a player, though, before we get out of here. A, B, C, D, or F. Be sure to get those grades in for Markinen in the comment section.